Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for the people that don't know me, like you have my name is Kirk Brannigan. He's a stand-up comedian. For that do know me, I apologize. So, um, it is an absolute honor to be Steve's best man. And can we all agree, by a round of applause, how awesome does Casey look tonight? Can we really do that? I don't know why you picked me, Steve, because this is going to a whole bunch of this. It's just fun. Um, initially, I was excited. One could say pumped up about this. I was really looking forward to it. And as the weeks got closer, I realized, crap, I have to give a speech. I have no idea ever how to give a best man speech. So what do we do when we don't know how to do something? We Google it, right? We put it in Google. How to give a best man speech. Here's what Google told me to do, all right? Tell how I met Steve, share a story, talk about Casey, and then define love, right? <laughs> so without further ado, fall 2002, I was a freshman at Robert Morris University, walking around, collar, walking around. I had a second day on campus, something like that. And I see Steve come up to him and say, like, hey, do you play softball? I said, yes. He's like, do you want to be one of our fraternity teams? I said, yes. Said, great. I'm like, well, how good is our team, though? He said, well, we're pretty good. I'm like, all right, well, I get a little nervous. I'm like, wow, I got a fraternity that's going to be on the softball team. I'm kind of excited. So bad. I go to the field. I find Steve. He's like, Kurt, what position do you play? I'm like, infield, outfield, it's fine. Wherever, wherever you need me, I'll play. He was like, well, we'll play second and I'll take control of the outfield. I'm like, all right, we're, we're a good team. Steve can take control of the outfield. <laughs> all right, so we're in the field first. We're the home team. The very first pitch to the very first batter hits a shot way in the air, right to Steve. If you've ever played baseball before in the outfield, your first step is always back. No one told that to Steve. <laughs> he ran eight steps forward, stops, and just watches the ball fly 20 yards over his head. It was a long season. Not good. No, but after yeah, living with yeah, him yeah, in the fraternity, finding out a, a common interest such as the Simpsons, sport management majors, uh, realized we were two of, two of the coolest guys on campus. <laughs> I'm like, hey, this is, this is a pretty nice guy. But our friendship did not go to the next level until one magical weekday night, his senior year, when I was president, we decided the to world. be cool and go drink about 10 Long Island iced teas across the street at the ground round. Like, yeah, we're cool. We can do this. So, cool. so we get over there, and we get pretty smashed. And we're walking back to campus, all right? So we get down to where we live. And right before we go inside, Steve sees two paint cans. Oh, yeah. And there's a big grin on his face. And he just walks <laughs> over to them as I think, this is a great idea. And only as Steve can say it, grabs them and throws them. Oh, I care about these. <laughs> Everywhere, right up in there, about 20 feet. And I'm like, wow, this is kind of fun. But as the paint cans slowly come down, the lid just come off. And oh. paint is everywhere. The building, the sidewalk on us. And Visor gives his visor, oh. <laughs> and we walk inside and pass out. <laughs> Next morning, 8 a.m., my cell phone rings. It's the Res Life Director. Kurt, come see me immediately. Oh, great. I know what this is about. So I walk down there with my hangover, sit down. It's like, it has come to my attention that one of your fraternity brothers has apparently thrown paint everywhere behind the suites. Do you know who it was? Like, I have no idea. <laughs> well, we do. So you either give me his name or the entire chapter is getting punished. All right, let me see what I can do, and I'll come back down maybe mid-afternoon and tell you what's up. So I walk right back into Steve's room, knock at his door, get in there, wake him up like, Steve, hey, they knew it was you that threw the paint. What, what do you want me to do? He was like, Kurt, I'm graduating in like a month. All right, hey, I can't afford to get any type of trouble to delay this. He's like, you can't say my name. You can't say it was me. I just looked him dead in the eye and just said, hey, Steve, I was never planning on it. <laughs> I said, Steve, Steve, that's really sweet feel it. It's deep. Now, and then it's great. And one magical night recently, after that, he introduced me to Casey. And I said, Steve, you, you met a girl. 
Shocking. <laughs> like, but when I found out they were watching the Pens game together at a bar, I'm like, uh-oh, she might be one to keep. But the first time I met her, being his BFF, I have to look at her, and I shot her one of these looks like, hey, watch yourself, girl. <laughs> she fired right back at me with, don't worry about it, I can handle my own. <laughs> oh, she's cool. She's cool. But after that, though, she uh, laughed at our stupid Simpsons jokes, laughs at the monocles that we wear, <laughs> these our telescopes we look out of. <laughs> like that. I knew Casey was right to Steve, but it didn't absolutely clench it until the night that Casey said yes at the Pens game. They were inside console, and Casey, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are about to watch the game. You leaned over to Steve and said, hey, I guess you got a new BFF now. <laughs> so that was, that's good, because then I came across a wedding quote that said, if, you're best, if you have to invite your best friend to a wedding, then you're marrying the wrong person. And it would just be really awkward if we were getting married. That would just be really awkward for everyone here. Okay. But um, no, it's, it's great. And Steve and Casey, finally, the definition of love, I looked it up, to be honest with you, okay? And uh, Webster defines love as one's personal affection for another. I read that, I'm like, okay, it doesn't really make sense to me. So bear with me here, people. This is a definition of love according to Kurt, all right? It's his best friend finding the girl that makes his dreams come true. I think that fits a lot better. So whatever we have in front of us, let's raise them. To Steve, Casey, today, tomorrow, and forever. Love you guys. Cheers. Thank you.